Yes. It seems it's, it's already been recording uh, just right now. And uh, since it's just recorded, I'll mention the beginning of the recording. Uh, very good afternoon. This is lecture 15, the caller, and it is by George Herbert. And this is the poetry class from College of Art, University of Basra, Evening Studies. And this is your speaker, Dr. Hassan Majid. Very big welcome to everybody. So uh, the main topic of discussions today will be about covering George Herbert's biography. Then we will move to the point of the caller. We're going to find out the poem. And then we will introduce a summary of the caller. And the summary is preceded by analysis of the caller. And then ending up the whole lecture by uh, delivering a conclusion that uh, detects the overall images and ideas emerging from the analysis of Church Herbert's power. Uh, Mr. Hussain, uh, can you hear me clearly and loudly, please? Yeah, yeah, Doctor, I hear you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. So, general overview about the uh, George Herbert biography. Herbert has already graduated from Cambridge University. And as you may know, Cambridge is one of the most prestigious universities uh, across centuries, uh, not simply in Europe, but also around the world. Herbert remained more or less unemployed and useless from 1690 to 1630. Like most of other of his contemporaries, George Herbert was uh, suffering from uh, uh, unemployment, where he cannot be finding appropriate job or any types of job uh, so as to uh, survive in this life. So those people who are not being able to find a job, they will be having uh, a very uh, suffering, a very bad sufferings and a very uh, uh, tough and hard times, of course. Then Herbert became tortured by a sense of the lack of purpose and meaning in his life. When we don't have anything to do in life, when there is no aims, no expectations, and when we are not having any sense of purpose beyond ourselves. So we will start to uh, have a, a, a notion of being tortured by this kind of lack of purpose and meaning in life. Meaning in life happens when we human beings will be able to, yes, to uh, find aims, to have a dream to achieve or having certain tasks to, you know, accomplish. But for those who are un unemployed people like George Herbert, who are not being able to find any meaning and sense in life, they are finding themselves leading a meaningless life, ending up in loneliness, frustration, and a very terrified situation. Quite in the argument of the autobiography, we still further, we find a sense of a new convictions in his life where he is moving from a state of being actually a non employed individual to becoming a priest to save God or as a means of solving his unemployment problem. So, in this period of his life, Herbert is living a state of paradox. He's finding himself in the middle of moving into a religious domain or remaining, you know, in one place. But sometimes people would like to know why they are making certain choices in life. So why he wants to feel, why he wants to be a priest? Because he wants to translate his devotion to God? or simply he wants to uh, leave a state of uh, being poor and uh, moves into a much better and more safer spaces in the name of serving God, in the name of bringing up Christianity and spreading the word of Jesus Christ. Asien, can you hear me clearly and loudly, please? Yeah, Victor, we are very... All right. That being the case, 
Herbert make a final decision that he's being able to be a priest with his heart, not for, a, not for the sake of material reasons. Of course, uh, being a religious person is not an easy decision. And those who want to be a religious person who are spreading the word of God and the prophet and of course the rituals, they must work it for the principle themselves. No, not because I'm doing this for something else. I'm doing God. I'm spreading the word of God for the sake of the principles, for the sake of this unity of principles. So we have decision makes and experience to be undertaken based on principles or based on benefits. So being a priest for George Herbert is not for a materialistic. It's not for, it's not for a material aim, but for a purely God and the spiritual aim. Herbert Palms reflects this perpetual self-interrogation and the emotional seesaw it induced, varying from a souring confidence in the love and appreciation of God to a plan declaring that God has disavowed his suitor. So that's why, uh, accept the premise that doing things must be in line of our convictions, and at the same time, we must be able to work, worship, and submit a full will when we are trying to spread the word of God and protect fellow Christians and fellow uh, uh, believers, of course. So the, 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 the correspondence between the intention and thinking and the action is almost 100% for Herbert. Unfortunately, certain people are not doing the, the, the religious uh, work and the religious missions purely for the sake of spreading the word of God. And this is absolutely unacceptable. George Herbert, we are still into the, uh, into the, into the biography where we are finding in 1630, Herbert became priest of the parish of Bermeton in Oxfordshire. So, after all, after a, a long serious meditation and consideration about his real intention and purpose, he, end up, he ended up in a situation where he embraced the fact of being a priest. Each human being must be able to uh, embrace new ideas and revelations based on convictions, not interests, of course. Finding contentment in service to God. So he is fully submitted his will to being a loyal and faithful servant to God. Moving to the next step, the solution to the problem of self-centered uh, center, centeredness from which all sin ultimately stems lay in a total submission of the ego to the God worth. Being a submitted, a mindful believer requires you to have a consciousness that the, 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 the problematical complexity of self-awareness, sorry, the problematical complexity of self-centeredness can be overwhelmed with the notion and the conception of a total submission of the ego to the God worth. Total submission al khudu al kamil wa arka al ragabat al dunyawiya ila sultat Allah wa sultat they're doing good or trying to. For those who would like to be a very practical and practicing, uh, practicing Christianity or Islam, they must submit their will and they must submit their egos and carnal desires to something more than desire itself, to something more essential than fulfilling the desires, and that is a sense of submission to God. This experience will maintain as well as substantiate the notion of being a practical priest, a very honest and faithful uh, uh, work uh, uh, of spreading the word of God for those who are interested, of course, and for those believers who want to deepen their faith. So many of his parents, I mean, George Herbert, and with the tensions of by trusting surrender of the self into the hand of the world. So if you are doing something with the heart, and as we say it, wholeheartedly, 
This means that you are fully convinced in doing something. And in doing so, you will achieve a very real, authentic, as well as rational faith. We still learn to the notion of George Herbert biography, where we can find the fact that George Herbert's poetry reveals his awareness of the infinite possibilities for self-deception in man. The notion of self-deceptions, that or al ghafla those people who are finding justifications for themselves and trying to uh, to delve into uh, the, the the notion of filling the carnal desire filling the stomach desires being able to get angry being able to drive recklessly and doing something that is not accepted by the sense of the community and not by the tradition as well so self this is delving into the darkness of filling the desires and uh, finding an image or an idea that's become dominating your self in a way uh, that's leaving you away from the straight path. So uh, there is there's a certain uh, there's a certain conviction in this context where uh, George Herbert biography is being able to differentiate between the notion of self-deception in man and the notion of having a full submission to God. And between two points, and between, two, between these two converging points, sorry, diverging points, there is more to become into the caller and where we will be able to find the notion of devotion and the notion of uh, being able to fulfill the ego desires, of course. Asian, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, Doctor, you are. Thank you. So, any poem that does not glorify God is regarded as artificial. According to George Herbert's conviction, that any poem that serves a purpose beyond God or a purpose far away from the God or God. It is not real, it is false, and it cannot be substantiated as beautiful, as valid. So, poems that are not working and for the principle of achieving submission to God, in the eye of George Herbert, it is nothing but an artificial job or artificial work, and it will never be a piece of work at all. That's why George's poetry tends to be simpler, more direct, better of adornment than that of the ex-Catholic Don. Uh, when you are dealing with religious service, when you are trying to convey the God message, you must be authentic, you must be real, and you must be genuine. So it is direct because it is typical, because it is from God, it is direct and it is simpler because it conveys a message and this message must be received, be received very clearly. When we are dealing with sensitive issues like God, religion and the holy books, we must be careful when we are using the language because if there is a language of ambiguity and a language of interpretation, there would be a chance for mistakes and this is against God's will and it will produce a faith that is distorted by interpretation, not substantiated by real convictions and, of course, uh, 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 scriptures. This is the poem. I've already, I've already uh, uh, played the poem on a YouTube platform sometimes earlier, as I may remember, of course. And uh, we will start the process of uh, solving as well as deconstructing each and every uh, uh, single theme uh, uh, being embodied in the caller, which is basically written by uh, George Herbert. So before we are coming into the crux of the analysis and themes as well, we must be able to understand the fact that we have a religious poetry, 
No, we have a person who is being fully devoted to God almost all his life, but at the same time, he gets fed of moving into this path. So he is diverging from the path of God where he starts his poem with the notion, I struck the boat and cried, no more, I will be a boat. So let's just start with analyzing, with analyzing the poem and we will see the main preoccupation of the poet who is suffering from what and what is the main point of conviction, what is the main point of belief into this poem. So the poem starts with a contestation of the current status. By this I mean that he is not fully convinced with the current reality and current thinking. الفكر الحالي الذي يجسده الشاعر يبدو أنه غير مقتنع ويشعر بالاستياء والازدراء ووصل إلى حد الانفجار والبكاء يود أن يغير هذا التفكير. So I'll start with the first stanza as well as we will start to understand the many crocs of this cola analysis. الصوت عالي واضح يا حسين. عالي واضح دكتور. The poem begins with a dramatic statement of refusal. I struck the board and cried no. People having the ability to endure having the ability to overcome certain difficulties and they can live hard times and still keeping their principles. Lakin, but sometimes enough is enough. In this case, our speaker in the poem, the Kola, having enough from living a certain lifestyle and he decides to start a new way but before starting a new perspective for life he must show us that he is already done and already enough with the existing lifestyle and existing con convictions and uh, way of thinking the poem describes the ravings of a person growing fishers and wilder as he strains to release himself from the restrictive pressure that surrounds him Sometimes life fell with different kinds of challenges. Sometimes those who are living uh, or leading a certain way of life, they are not having a spaces of hope or not being able to, uh, to feel a, a sense of relief or bringing more pleasure into life. When you are leading a very strict way of life, a religious way of life, you will be able to live in one dimension and certain into a certain uh, uh, principles and of course conducting certain types of uh, practices that being the case in the caller the speaker is getting fed of these principles and uh, practices he are uh, leading and reflecting in reality the speaker wants to leave a certain lifestyle behind so when we are getting fed of certain lifestyles this means we would like to embrace a new Beliefs, new revelations. إن هذه القلوب تمل كما تمل الأبدان فابتغوا لها طرائف الحكم. ما هي طرائف الحكم? What is the meaning of طرائف الحكم? It's being able to create change and see it in your eyes. So in this case, the poem wants to see a lifestyle beyond the principle and the practice of his. Lifestyle, that's to say being a priest. Yes. He is a person of ambition and desire. 
yet everything in life seems to conspire to frustrate or torment him. Each and every single human have certain dreams, certain ambitions, and certain uh, uh, repressed feelings, so to speak. But at the same time, when we find the lifestyle we are living is not bringing a sense of satisfactions and a sense of relief to us, we began to think there is something missing in our life. And when there is something missing in our life, we must be able to identify, to find and locate that things and start to uh, 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 undertaking the initiatives of embracing it or bringing it more into our life and into our being. So in this sense, uh, 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 the, 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 the depressed desire across the years is making a sense of repression into the psyche and into the mentality of the speaker. But in this situation, he would like to move beyond this sense of limitations and uh, religious routines into a sense where he will be able to meet and to satisfy the uh, the, the, the earthly material as well as the desires he already prohibiting himself with by letting a religious lifestyle rather than a, a, an open-minded or a, let's say it, a, a materialistic way of life. The speaker life is one of sights and tears, a situation he finds particularly distressing because he can readily imagine the joys and the glories, the wine, fruits, and the flowers that are withheld from him. There is a binary position between the good and the bad, the religious and the non, and the, uh, what is the so-called the, 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 the open-minded persons who are accepting the others, opening up the, the, the horizon of thinking and actions, where, and we have on the other sides of the formula those the religious, the isolationists, and those who are with certain limitations and certain kinds of restrictive mentalities where they are thinking in a certain way rather than the other way around. So in this situation, he would like to move from this campus and jumping in a different campus. He would do an intakal min had al muaskar ila al muaskar al fikri al akhar. And believe me, dear students, one of the challenging and most problematical uh, uh, crux, uh, most problematical uh, uh, issues uh, human beings can do is changing perspective, altering lifestyles. تغيير الحياة والتفكير هي من أصعب أنواع التحديات التي يمكن أن يعتريها وممكن أن يمر بها الإنسان. So he wants to fulfill the desire of the ego. He wants to start suffering from preventing himself from the earthly desires, from the carnal desires. And he would like to feel free, do whatever he wants, and having a sense of satisfaction, bringing a feeling of relief. Despite the fact that our dignity lies into our freedom, and of course, our freedom lies into our actions. And if actually these actions are good, we can, we, we can embrace it. And if our actions are bad, we can stop it. But according to the caller and according to the Christian faith, of course, there is principles and the practices. And the tradition, the, the principle and the practices are uh, 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 ordering us to be uh, 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 and feel compliance with these uh, uh, behaviors and avoid any uh, reckless and uh, calm desires, so to speak. On the contrary, our speaker decides to move into a new session and the new experience where being able to fulfill the ego desire is of a vital strategic significance for his satisfaction and the sense of relief. Why, in the analysis, we've been able to uh, uh, find uh, uh, the, the, the transmission of the caller, the transmission of the speaker from the restrictive lifestyle into a more open and a more uh, fulfilling lifestyle. Well, the ego 
and the fulfillment of the ego desire are the most important things in life. Please, let us, let us shed extensive light on this notion. Human being, people are being driven by certain motivations. Some people's drive in life, some people supreme aim in life is to fulfill his sexual desire. So when your, 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 your point of reference is just simply to fill the desire of the, of the ego, such as sex, when you are using the mobile phone, for example, you are using for the aim of finding sexual desires. When you are eating or you are drinking water or you are eating, you are not eating to feel full of stomach, but you are eating in order to bring the energy to be taken from this food into fulfilling the sexual desire. When you are driving the car, you are not driving for the sake of driving to reach something better, but to find a way or an exit from the highway to fulfill the desire. On the other sides of the formula, Hsien Asat Ali Wadah. Ali Wadah, Mr. On the other sides of the formula, we can be able to find those who are having the drive of, you know, uh, respecting themselves and preserving the community. So when you are trying to drive your thinking, when you respect yourself and be able to proceed the, 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 the words of thought, you will be able to wake up in certain moments and sleep in certain moments. You will be able to eat certain types of food and avoid certain types of thinking and certain types of uh, uh, behaviors. And you're going to be able to attend somewhere and not being able to be in somewhere else. So tell me, what is your drive? And how is your drive is influencing all of your thinking and behaviors? I'll tell you which person you are and what is your directions. So the speaker reveals a determination to change his ways immediately and exchange his tears for the pursuit of double pleasure. What is this? على هذا الكلام قرر الانتقال من المدرسة المحاضرة. والمدرسة الدينية للدخول إلى إشباع الرغبات وشعور بالراحة والأطمئنان. Like uh, Labrador, the speaker suggests that inhibition and moral laws are only a rope of sands once a person decides not to be bound by them. In this life, whether the speakers or us, we are led by certain principles and we are reflecting certain practices in life. We are having the principles, we are having practices based on certain beliefs. For some beliefs, traditions, communities, common sense are a constraint rather than a way of life. <laughs> يقول إن التقاليد سلاسل تقيدك. So conventions, traditions, according to Freud, is nothing but a chains that are robbing your way of thinking and of course preventing you from fulfilling certain kinds of desires, so to speak. So for those who are who are who are allowing themselves to break away from the convictions, the, the, the beliefs, the principles, and the practices of being good and submitted to God, they will be able to consider it as nothing and there is no barriers and you can do whatever it takes to feel satisfied. Instead of being blind to the forbidden pleasures of life, the speaker will now save only his needs and desires. As I've mentioned, in this life, there is something beyond our interests, more bigger than our feelings and more essential than fulfilling the egoistic desires, which is having strong faith in God, where 
you are having this faith for bringing a more uh, disciplined lifestyle that keep the society and the community from any sense of moral weakness and corruption, of course. And instead of being blind to the forbidden pleasures of life, the speakers will now serve only his needs and desires. So now he is mindful to allow himself to fulfill the desire of the ego, rather than being mindful to block any impulses of uh, 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 straying away from the straight path. الآن هو يسمح له ويطلق لنفسه العنان لتلبية الرغبات الممنوعة والرغبات التي تجذب السعادة والراحة والسرور. Zainab, can you hear me clearly? Yes, it's clear. Thank you very much. Welcome. Enraptured by his own enthusiasm, even the death's head, the traditional reminder of mortality and the nearness of judgment is no longer intimidating and will certainly not be part of his luggage as he prepared to go abroad. Let me, let, me, let me give this a, a very easy example. Sometimes when we are moving on the road or driving through in a channel, we can find a banner where the road is closed. This means you have to stop and turn around the vehicle and go back somewhere else. In, 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 in Abrahamic faith, in Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, we've got these limitations and these, we call it uh, the God boundaries, tilka hududullah. So there is certain limitations. We are not being able or even though allowed to cross it through or going and break down these walls. So despite the fact that the speakers of the poem having a sense of realization of the dangerous situation he is in, that's to say, leaving his tradition and convictions, religious convictions, and moving into the premise of filling the desire of the ego, he is not being stopped. He is not being able to be uh, 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 feeling hesitated because he, there is a God and there is punishment and this is wrong. Even the fact of knowing the day of judgment and knowing that, of course, the reminder that this life is a very temporary and we are living based on a certain age, conceptual age, or a real age. He accepts that and he goes on fulfilling the desires. Sometimes people are very aware of doing something and this something, they are of course also aware that this something is wrong and this will be punished by God and will be not accepted by societies of our friends, but we still do that. Yes, we have these kinds of people nowadays into this life where they know this is wrong, but they still do it. They know this is harmful, but they still keep on it. And this is a very big problem in these communities and societies. The speaker is celebrating his new creed of a practical selfishness. So, in being able to transform his identity from a religious identity to an identity where he's being able to fulfill his material and carnal needs and desires, this is a clear declaration and a remarkable point to be highlighted in this explication where a sense of selfishness is not simply asserted but of course reflected in his way of thinking for the time being. <clears throat> Excuse me. All the ravings of the speakers are answered by one gentle word 
light. He lit. An almost miraculous reminder that not only is the speaker always overhead by God, but more important, he is always protected, instructed, and accepted. Uh, sometimes in this life, we sin, we are wrong, although we know this fact, we are doing this bad behavior where God is not feeling acceptable and he will never include us into his mercy, but we still go on in this endless. But in the middle of doing the wrong or in the middle of having doing this sin constantly, we are fighting certain signs and certain evidence and indicators that we are doing the wrong. God send you the indicators and the sign. What is the meaning of these signs and indicators? So in the case of the color, the word G-I-L-D, guilt, this is the sign. Hey, you got to remember one thing, man. God is not only here. It's not only about you are knowing he is here. And he's always watching us, but he's always protecting, instructed, and accepting us. So as a turning point of conviction here, the poem starts to reconsider his a new revelations. At the beginning, he is getting fed of the religious and strict way of life, and he decided to fulfill the ego, the sexual, and the material pleasure. But now, he is being overwhelmed and anticipated a new idea, a new word, that the God he is worshipping is not only over us, watching us, but of course he is protecting, instructing, accepting. You see? So, this evidence and these indicators bringing a new shock to the mentality of the speaker. So it is basically a kind of religious mindfulness, a kind of a new uh, responses to the sexual impulses that she would like to fulfill in order to uh, bring a sense of relief and uh, overcome his suffering. This is the way the word of rebellion ends. El insan yibdi itraja' min yogaf at hadda. O ida ma yogaf at hadda. Fi ba'd al ahyan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I khali la fad dala al amam ana. Aw khali la fad muashrati gila intibih. Isma' la sot Quran. Ushuf la fad sura al Facebook. Aw diz la fad jama'a. So you must be able and highly perceptive to the indicators and to the messages on the ways you are receiving. الحذر الحذر فإن الله قد ستر كأنه قد غفر. so we have a situation where he is moving from a sense of mindfulness into a sense of headlessness. عندنا هنا موقف ينتقل من حالة الر المراقبة والمحاسبة general accepted Islamic thinking. Uh, المراقبه والمحاسبه where he is must he must get a, a very a very a very uh, a strict lifestyle where god we, 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 where we will be able to achieve a sense of submission and uh, again uh, god pleasure and satisfaction he is moving into a, 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 a reality of uh, a, a, a translating a sense of headlessness into his life by uh, fulfilling the egoistic desires and then he is being faced by the word of God, where a God, he's not simply overhead, but he is listening, he is protecting, and he is also instructing. And he is accepting us. He will accept you 
whatever you are doing, please come back. This is the message. So moving from mindfulness to headlessness, now he is moving from, from headlessness into mindfulness again. It is just like a, a continuum that is moving from this point and ending up moving to another point, which is headlessness, and then go back again to this. This is the movement of the consciousness where he's been moving from a highly restricted religious consciousness, then entering into a space of headlessness, then go back to the main crux and the main focal points of belief, which is submission to God. Zainab, can you hear me clearly, please? Yes, it's clear. The sound. <coughs> Excuse me, Arjul Madara. Even in the depth of his anger and rebelliousness, the speaker is a caller, and God is always ready to answer. In the, in, the, in, the, in the context of the poem, certain actions will lead us to dangerous destinations. Action like being angry, or uh, uh, you are being, uh, having, uh, the, having the green line to break their rules, the moral rules. But the, even the fact of we are doing wrong things, we can be able to call upon God, the one who will be able to hear us, to guide us and protect us. So this gives the, 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 the impression that We sin as a, uh, uh, let, us, let, us, let us now try to uh, uh, synthesize the fact here. What is the synthesis? we are bringing into this uh, 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 con uh, consciousness. Except the premise that moving from mindfulness to headlessness is on into this poem, but a return back to a mindfulness is assured for those who are being reminded by the greatness, mercy, and comprehensiveness of God. So, we sin, we wrong, but we find the compulsion to do good or try to, in order to emphasize, preserve, and maintain our submission to God and be able to live a healthy and a more devoted lifestyle. This is uh, the, the, the main crux of the caller. The recurring topic of Herbert poems is not perfection, but correction. So, we cannot live the life of perfection. You can be a perfect people in certain types of, uh, 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 with, certain, with certain people, you can be perfect. We can be perfect in certain corner of life. But being a perfect human being is a very difficult. And those perfectionists are suffering from a lot. Because you cannot do everything you want according to your ways or according to certain standards. Because in this life, there is methodologies and there is challenges and there is unexpected crisis and uh, uh, beyond the planning uh, 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 situations. So being a perfectionist is a huge challenge for those who would like to reflect this uh, way of thinking. But being able to correct your mistakes is a more reasonable uh, uh, way to put the caller formula into action. So, as I've mentioned in the conclusion of the, of the last article, when we sin, when we do wrong, we find the compulsion to do good. This is the process what I so-called correction. Al-insan huwa li yuslah nafsa wa yuslah amala. La yugayyiru Allah ma biqawman hatta an yugayyiru ma fi anfitsaham. This types of positive change is in the way of the straight path. 
in the way of a, embodying a philosophy of betterment and a lifestyle that is based on reason rather than satisfaction of the egoistic desires, eventually. حياتنا يقودها الشعور بالتصليح وبإعادة النظر في سلوكياتنا وقناعاتنا وحتى علاقاتنا مع الله ومع أنفسنا ومحيطنا ومؤسساتنا وملكات أهل الدنيا صوت علي واضح زين نعم نعم استاذ واضح Perfection is unreachable, but constant correction is one of the rules of life. مثل ما قلت لك, on the religious poetry for Herbert, the speaker of the color, is by no means wicked or reprehensible. He is in fact all too human, and his protest against the inevitable and disappointments, restrictions, and pains of life is one with which most of the readers of this poem can sympathize and identify. Herbert never denies the validity of the experience described in the color who suggests that such feeling, however, confused or disordered or angry are unworthy of expression. We cannot deny the fact that more, most of us in, in encountering or experiencing this type of feelings where we are getting fed of certain lifestyles and we would like to embrace the other sides of the economy. So it's not limited to the caller. But it is separated for us, for the rest of the believers around the world, of course. Herbert never denies the validity of the experience. I've mentioned this point, and I've already committed, commented of this point. Herbert knew that the Bible, especially the Book of Pleasants, one of his great spiritual and theoretic modules. So each and every single devoted human beings must be finding a point of reference. And in the caller, the point of reference, the points of belief where he is receiving the principles and reflecting his practices and rituals is the Holy Bible. So, the Holy Book is providing a sense of guidance that preserve, maintain, and ensure the sense of being submitted to God and never running astray in order to fill the egoistic or the material desire. Can I end soon, hopefully? Alongside the Bible, the Carnivalesque spiritual is also something of a different kind of social and religious ritualism. Carnival is a festival time of at least temporary release from the obligations and restraints of a daily life. Celebrations like Carnival, it is a space of being able to release the energy and being integrated into uh, other fellow uh, believers and communi community, you know, community uh, celebrations are bringing people together where different ideas and images and certain kinds of behavior will be reflected, will be uh, 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 embedded uh, in a way that uh, creating a sense of change and a sense of uh, 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 a new way of uh, uh, experiencing the day, of course. Carnival functions not only as an individual and societal relief, letting off pressure of, of might otherwise built to intolerable levels, but also an important acknowledgement of the claims of the body and the person legitimate right to carry out against the strains of religion, law, and mortality. So this kind of أن هذه النفس تملك كما يجب عليكم أن هذه القلوب تملك كما تملك الأبدان تبتغلها طرائف حكم The Carnival is being able to uh, provide a sense of hope providing a sense of action, enjoyment as well as assertion of those beliefs so please have it in your way and live it to the supreme and being able to uh, uh, bring in up a new feelings So Carnival according to the caller is bringing a new sense of renewal for those who are being devoted to submit their wills to God and achieve a sense of submission to the particular God. 
God's surface dramatically at the end of the poem, and this is a surprising, wondrous moment. The true desires of the speaker reinforces not his momentary rebellion from but form, but his incredibly close connection to God. Sometimes when you are very connected, you feel yourself you are very far. And sometimes when you are very far, you are really connected. So this push and pull factors, as embedded in the caller, just being mindful of the presence and the existence of God, or being fully mindful to fulfill the desire, will of course bring you back to him or take you far away from him. You got it? And this is the, this is the fluctuation of the human thinking. We are not oneself. We are different kinds of feelings, different kinds of imaginations where we can find different feelings are reachable and other desires may be achievable. But at the same time, we can find ourselves in the middle of a situation where we must stay in one campus, not moving into the other way around. And this is what happened in the caller. As in so many of Herbert's other poems in the caller, one comes to God in a surprising way. In this case, after exhausting oneself in an impatient struggle against, against God, who is overwhelmingly patient, kind, and understanding. Those people who are being able to experience different kinds of lifestyles and mentalities, they have the right to find the final choice in their life. And in the case of the caller, he go back to God in order not fully preserve, but also affirm his sense of submission to God. This is the final slides. I've got another two slides, and then we will end up the, uh, uh, the session. al istintaj Heavenly love is the poor tribe for all love. So, according to the caller, love is a real and genuine love if it is fully devoted to the Creator, which is God. Sexual love is an obsession with the reflection rather than the reality with the creature instead of the creator. So we have, we have the, 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 the earthy life, uh, the earthy love of desires, sex, filling the stomachs with the wine, with the desire, the other, fa other, other forms of the desires. And we have the, 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 the spiritual love, which is a love that is purely directed for the submission of God through this poetry. Herbert continually, continually strives to lose his identity, to draw his egoistic desire in the ocean of God's love. He is always directing his attention away from himself toward God, unlike Don, who is forever turning his regards back from the God he addressed and toward his one person. The caller is being governed by the principles of mindfulness where wherever the caller is not being able to be in the direction of God, he have a sense of mindfulness that redirects his attention towards the more essential, the more needed and the more quintessential, so to speak. And يقوم بإعادة الاعتبارات وإعادة توجيه الانتباه إلى ما هو ضروري وإلى ما هو ما هو جوهري في حياته وهو تكريس الذات وتكريس الانتباه نعم towards the eternal صوبة الباقي towards God Herbert constantly strives to make God not Herbert, the subject of his poetry. So this is a highly devotional poem. His motto is not mine neither, meaning that he saw himself as an possessed of any peculiar poetic gift, but as simply returning his God-given talent to the maker who had originally lent to. So everything he do, the way he thinking is fully devoted to one thing, if nothing else, which is a sense of achieving submission and preserving a sense of submission to God. Last slide. The emphasis throughout Herbert's poetry is on the rebirth, 
Life itself is a continual battle between the ego struggling to assert itself and the soul. The inner voice, the unconscious perhaps, which call it quietly but persistently, tells the ego to come down and submit itself to God. Our existence in this life is to having certain kinds of life. We having different kinds of experiences and in the middle of the experiences, we will be tested. Our patience, our endurance, our commitment will be tested. And those who are being able to pass this test and being able to uh, 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 endure the difficulties of this test will of course reveal their true sense of belief and reassure a sense of submission to God. This inner voice is often characterized in Herbert as a friend. وهذا الحس الذي يعيدنا إلى الاتجاه الرباني والاتجاه صحيح أنه بمثابة الصوت الصديق والحارس الأمين. The typical internal dialogue of Herbert versus the attraction between the ego and the sound of the flesh and the spirit and its customary resolution can be clearly witnessed at the end of the caller. So this is a reminder that even we are in the middle of the bad situations and in the middle of fulfilling the carnal desires, God will be appeared. And there is a certain reminder that, hey, you are in the bad and this is the right. So this reminder, you must be able to find. And in this poem, we are being able to find these indicators and evidence. Once this harmony between the ego and inner voice is achieved, man is rebellion, but by the very nature of his being, his rebirth is only temporary. The ego will continue to reassert itself and the process of rebirth will have to begin all over again. Except the premise that the conflict between the egoistic desires and the ability to preserve our submission to God is a continuous war till the end of life. So in order to create a sense of balance and reassure our submission, we must experience this egoistic desire and we will be able to intercept, identify it, putting certain limitation to it and eventually redirect our attention toward the more safer and the more comprehensive and the protector, which is God, so to speak. The lecture has already been ended and I'll try to stop down the recording and then we go back to the question and answer session, right?